everyone, welcome back to the Gamers Hall. I'm Chris. And I'm Adam. And today we're going to be talking about the Ranger subclass Drake Warden. Mm -hmm. Which is a very interesting class, a uh, subclass, um, based around you getting your best friend, which is a Drake that you get summoned that will eventually be, basically be a dragon. Yep. Um, and just like with the, with the monk, they give you a Drake Warden Origins table, so you could... You could choose one of these six options, or you could use these and modify them to get something else. Like, I mean, for instance, uh, you invested a few drops of you ingested a few drops of dragon blood, forever infusing your nature magic with draconic power. Kind of awesome. Where did you get the dragon's blood? But the first thing you're going to get at third level is draconic gift. You learn the thaumaturgy cantrip, uh, which is a ranger spell for you. And you can read, speak, and write Draconic. And if you already know Draconic, you can choose a different language. Both very useful abilities. I yeah. Mean, extra language, always good. And an extra cantrip, always useful. Especially if it's something you would never had access to before anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> Bo both possibly in and out of combat uh, options. So mm -hmm. that's great. And then at third level... The reason you're probably going to be taking this uh, subclass is mm -hmm. your Drake companion. Mm -hmm. And they've really based this companion where, as an action, you summon it within 30 feet of you. And it appears, it gets to pick a uh, damage type, it gains immunity to that damage type, and it, its core abilities are based around uh, whatever damage type it's picked. And it's going to level <clears throat> with you, and it's yep. going to in increase its stats as you increase. The, the Drake companion is kind of based around what they did with... Uh, and Tasha's. Tasha's. Um, the stats are a little bit different. You're going to end up with a little higher AC, most likely. Um, yeah, you you, and, you get a 14 AC instead of the all the Tasha's have 13. Right. The um, same hit points. Uh, well, you have plus plus a proficiency bonus. So as you level, it will be 14 plus whatever proficiency is. So this guy starts out as a 16 AC, which is pretty darn good. Yeah. Uh, which five. Uh, plus five times your ranger level, so by the time you get this, the guy has 20 hit points. So 16 mm -hmm. AC, 20 hit point creature that you can just summon, and with uh, action economy, that makes a difference, because just like the other ones, you can use a bonus action to make it do its attack. Yep. Otherwise, it'll just dodge, or it'll, it'll always attempt to use its own reaction when it can. Yes. Um. So, or you can make it, uh, if you're incapacitated, the drake can now take any action of its choice. So if you're knocked down, your drake also doesn't go away. It's still here waiting for you and trying to do whatever it can. Yeah, it doesn't just take the dodge yeah. action. No. Uh, or just go by and protect you. It's, yeah, it, it will do its own thing. It might thing. try to drag you away from harm. Um, it could do... Lots of yeah. different little things that also it's uh it's when once you summon it it is out until it goes away or mm -hmm. until you uh, send it away. Yep. But also if it dies, you can spend a spell slot to bring it back. Yep. A first level or higher. Um, which is great. So because a lot of rangers don't really use their spell slots other than for maybe hunter's mark most of the time. Yeah. Um, but I feel that this creature is probably better than hunter's mark. Yeah. By by a long shot. Well, I mean, this creature almost gives you a free hunter's mark. Yeah, because it, it's because it has a reaction. The infused strike, which is probably the best part of this creature. Um, yeah. When another creature within thirty feet of the Drake that it can see hits with hits a target with a weapon attack, the Drake infuses the strike with its essence, causing the target to take an extra D six of the type determined by the Draconic essence. So. As long as somebody out of your party is hitting, this thing is always adding an extra d6 yeah. to its hit. The fighter up there hitting with sword, a uh, sword or or a mace. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's getting an extra d6 fire damage. You're a ranger back there shooting bows. All, as you're, long as you're within thirty feet, yeah, your your yep. arrows are getting an extra uh, d6 cold. Yeah, which is <laughs> not not something people should just go. Eh, it's a d6. No, this is a as long as somebody does it this thing is always giving an extra d6 damage so there's always another d6 worth of damage being done and i mean that can mean the between life and death you know just getting that Not little mention, extra i mean that, that's really strong for ranged attacks because yeah. with the with melee attacks i mean you know the drake has to be within 30 feet of them hitting with a ranged attack the 
the person doing the ranged attack has to be within 30 feet of the drake, it doesn't matter how far away they're hitting yeah. from. It's strong for range because gotcha. the, uh, yeah. a person doing a ranged attack can hit somebody 60 to 90, 120 feet yeah. away, and they get that extra damage as long as the drake is within 30 feet of them. Yeah, which is extremely strong. Extremely strong. So, yes. uh, just solid abilities there. Yep, and then the fact that you can spend a spell slot to get it back when whenever, I mean, mm-hmm. that's fantastic. You don't yeah. have to worry about it dying. You don't have to do some crazy ritual. You don't have to go find something else. I mean... You always have your best friend. Yep, solid at third level. Absolutely solid. And actually, something that wouldn't be bad to just multi-class into. Yeah. Just a third level dip in this gets you a permanent summon creature that still gets better with you. Yeah. Maybe not great, but it gets better with you the entire time because it's all that's based off of your proficiency bonus going up. Yeah, but its hit points are based off your ranger level. Right. But if you're using it for just extra damage or uh, getting an extra hit in there, yeah, still not bad. No, not bad at all. All right. So next at 7th level, you get Bond of Fang and Scale. And your Drake it now grows to uh, medium size. You can actually mount the drake, and yeah, well, you can ride it. Uses a mount. Also, it grows wings. Yes, which is important. Which, if you're a medium creature and you try and mount it, it, it can't fly mm-hmm. uh, with you. But if you're a small creature like a halfling, halfling can mount the dragon and or drake, not dragon yet, mm-hmm. drake and fly on them. So a small creature can have this guy, and now they have a fly speed of forty while mounted. Yep. And on top of that, it's bite attack, 2d6 instead of 1d6. And uh, you gain resistance equal to the damage type you chose when some, when you summoned it. Yeah, so always having a, a fire damage type is pretty good. Damage resistance, as long as this thing's summoned, I guess. Um, yep. So I, I could definitely see a 10th level character being 7 levels... Drake, uh, Drake Warden, and three levels, uh, Cavalier Fighter. Yeah, because now you that. have a you have a companion that you could always mount mm-hmm. and resummon to to really get great use of that that Cavalier Fighter. You could also be like uh, three levels of a a Paladin form, and then this is you you summoning your mount and getting your lance. And, Riding along it with a lance and stabbing things with it. Um, yeah, but I mean, it's it's just a really cool thing. And not to mm-hmm. mention, I mean, the fact that you could just use this thing to just ride and travel in. It's, mm-hmm. That's that's amazing. Also, you can use it to, now that it has flying, it can get to places that most other party members can't get to. Completely independent of the party. In fact, it doesn't, it, it, the important thing about this is this creature can act on its own if, if you choose it to. You don't yes. have to actively make it do anything. Normally, it's only going to dodge or use its reaction, but if you're telling your DM, hey, I'm foregoing my action while this Drake goes out and does whatever yeah, you but want now, it to do. It, it, does, it does specifically say, now, if anything mounts the Drake, cannot fly. And once you mount it, fly speed's gone. If you're not mounting it, it can fly around and do whatever. Okay, yeah. Um, but now let's talk about the 11th level ability, the Drake's Breath. Now, it uh, has an action. You can excel a 30-foot cone of damaging breath or cause the Drake to excel it. So you or the Drake can spit out a 30-foot cone of uh, a breath attack of whatever you yeah. the chosen damage type is. Uh, dexterity saving throw equal to your spell save DC or take 8d6 damage. Uh, damage of the type uh, chosen of the type chosen and, and if they save it's still half and it goes up to 10d6 at 15 so this is very good oh and you get one free use if you want to use it again after that you can spend a third level spell yeah. slot to use it again yeah this is very very good for a melee style class or a class that's not used to having to deal with hordes because rangers usually even if you're like the horde breaker ranger or whatever that deals with a bunch of things around or two weapon you're not dealing with what cones do which is a lot of stuff. So, and you can make your Drake fly somewhere and then breathe it. Yeah, and if you or if your Drake is in the air and breathing down, thirty foot cone is 
I mean, you 30 foot one direction, 30 foot another direction, that's a 60 foot area yeah. diameter, a 60 foot diameter, <clears throat> basically. So you it's increasing how much area you can get and how many creatures. Yeah. Uh, so this is just, just a good ability. It's just strong. Yeah, 11th level, you basically get uh, uh, one free fireball, a smaller fireball. Smaller fireball. Uh, unless your drake is up high doing it, then that's so effectively so the, the exact same thing. So basically you still get one free fireball because you're yeah. going to do that. And then you can <laughs> spend third level spell slots to do it again. Yeah. Fireball. And by 11th level, you have three third level spell slots. You have fireball. Yeah. But it could be lightning It could be ball, lightning or acid, acid or, poison, or poison. Which is... Really great, too. Uh, yeah. So we'll move on to the last one, which is Perfected Bond. Um, get Empowered Bite. The Drake now does an additional 2d6 damage on its normal attack. So that's 3d6 of the damage type it does with its bite attack. Pretty good for 15th level. Uh, also, it becomes large. So now, the you're, you, when you ride a Drake, you're no longer pro- prohibitive from using the flying speed, a bond... So now you have a large drake um, that you can ride with that with its flying ability. So now you just have extra movement, and you also have reflective resistance. So whenever you or your drake takes damage uh, within thirty feet of each other, you can use your reaction to give yourself or the drake resistance to that instant damage, and it could be any damage done yes. to you, instantly halved. Yep, and you get that a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. That is good at 15th level. Oh, yeah, it's that fantastic. Is, that is useful at all times. Yes, this is all in and out of combat stuff. Yeah. Because, like, what if you're exploring and you come across a trap? Mm-hmm. You can instantly use a reflective uh, resistance yeah. on that. Or somebody shoots a uh, ray of disintegration at you. And, well, the normal damage you're about to take would kill you, but thank God you have your drake within 30 feet of you, because now it won't, and you're not turned into ash. Yeah. But at 15th level, that's going to happen. <laughs> um, so what's what's good and bad about this at the moment is that it's it's a very streamlined subclass. Oh, yeah. I mean, Every- all, major- all of your abilities are going to be, from third level on, are going to be about increasing the bond between you and the drake and making the drake stronger yeah which is good um but it's also bad because it doesn't have there's not a lot of extra utility abilities so it's really just how good are you with your best friend i keep calling the best friend because this is the best friend class you are actively making the best creature you possibly could to be around you at all times yeah but now the bad thing is if this if your companion gets taken out of combat, you have lost 90% of your subclass functionality. Right. Which hurts because Ranger sub, ranger as a class it, it is usually better because of the subclass that is with it, not within itself. Yeah, but you can expend a spell slot, bring it right back in the action. Yeah, or if you haven't used that ability Today, you can immediately pop it right back again. Yep, because when you summon it, it stays out until it drops to zero hit points or until you use this ability again, and you can mm-hmm. only you, you get it once for free a day. Well, if you summoned it yesterday and it's a week later, yeah. you have a free summon. Which means the versatility that this subclass is giving you is that it's giving you a whole nother creature that you have complete control over, and you can make it go do all types of things within its capabilities but it's not really that dumb with an eight intelligence it's pretty smart for a beast yeah with a 14 wisdom it is more wise than most normal humans um mm-hmm. so and it has the strength to back it up uh doing menial task and it's eventually going to have the size to do most of that stuff yeah so you gain a creature that is actively versatile all the time so what's better than one thing Two things. Two things. Now that you you two things can be acting on the same time and doing extra things, and it, it's, it would just be fun to have a companion with you that is what the beast master was intended to be. Yeah, right? yeah. This is. I mean, definitely. This is what it 
you know, a lot of people harp on the Beastmaster. Well, this is what the Beastmaster should have been. Yeah. And I would actually go so far as to say is if somebody wanted to reflavor this and say instead of a Drake Warden, it's like a Lion Warden, and then you end up getting a Lion instead, uh, instead of a Drake or some other mythical creature... Within itself, it mostly fits. I mean, the dragon's <laughs> breath is, is the only you, thing you could change it to chimera and have like a mini chimera. Yeah, you could. Uh, I mean, and then could... that would fit the dragon. That would fit the the breath chimera chimera breath. Yeah, I could. But it that's the that's the beauty I think of this subclass is it's actually it's it's so simple but so good at what it does. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't hinder you from playing with what it is and how you know where you can go with it yeah uh, flavor wise as long as your dm is okay with it of course right um but now the only advantage that the beast master has over <sighs> this one is um i mean i don't really remember all the beast master's abilities but just the sheer fact that it can summon different creatures of different types you know you've yeah. got land sea and air so you know this one doesn't get wings until seventh level Right. So, but you know, the that's the advantage that the Beastmaster has over the Drake Warden because yeah. the Drake Warden is specifically going to be the Drake, whereas the Beastmaster can summon varying different types of animals yeah, for the that, situation that's yeah, needed. Like, oh, we're going out, we're going to be pirating. Okay, like, good, I can summon a sea creature, or I can summon a bird that's got flyby attack and stuff like yeah. that. I think it fits. Um, you could almost see oh, this definitely. as a paladin class in some ways because you can the summon companion used to be a major thing for paladins summoning its mount, which is kind of what this is doing in a way. Eventually, <laughs> eventually. Um, but it actually, the more I thought about it, the more I also saw. You know what? This does fit a ranger subclass. It really does. Yeah. Where gaining something that has the versatility to deal with situations itself and effectively expand your uh, ability to um, inspect the environment and really explore uh, is what rangers are meant to do right they're not meant to be weighed into battle they're not necessarily the drist do this right. is what the drist do was before he became the combat whirlwind that he used to be he was well he was always a combat whirlwind but when he got the one of our it's kind of what he he was. This this is what it was when he was in the underdark yeah. before he got uh, above ground. Yeah, he, with Guinevere using using together for strategy and finding things and hunting and, and packs keeping each and, other safe and everything. Uh, it, it's a it feels very close to that and useful for a ranger. Uh, it, it's not gonna probably be the most powerful in builds, um, but. It probably might be one of the more funner builds to do. I could I could see some 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 things happening. Oh, it most likely is, but there's nothing evident within looking I mean, at it as is right now. Especially with you pointing out the fact that once you summon it one day, a, you know the next day or a few days later, that thing's got max HP at that point. It's true. Well, then if it goes down, you get a free summon, free free creature with. I mean. At third level, it has 20 hit points. So mm. then every level after that is just going to keep going up. I mean, that's that's something. And if a, free, you, a free if, stack of hit points is something. And since you can speak Draconic, this creature probably cannot... It will, actually, its language is Draconic. Yeah. That means it can speak and understand everything you're saying to it, and it can speak back to you. So you can literally send this on a mission for a day. Hey, go out there. Go find out anything you can. It's most likely going to remember whatever it sees. And you go, hey, come back. And it reappears right in front of you. And you go, what'd you find? You have a free, well, basically the, was it Arcane Eye without <laughs> concentration? Except it doesn't go through doors. And it doesn't go through doors, stuff. but can you imagine a, a battlefield uh, or a large scale battle where there's different battles and everything going on and sending your drake up above to scout all enemy positions and what fronts you need to fight at oh yeah that would be fantastic yeah and it doesn't even have to come back and even if it dies you just go well i think it's dead Boop, here it is it's back tell me what you see yeah or or even if you've already done that you spend a spell slot yeah 
Done. First level spell so, slot. You got plenty of those. So useful. All right. Nice. So role play wise, um, there's a lot of different ways you can go about this. <laughs> I mean, a lot of this is going to be very player dependent. Mm-hmm. You know, how do you want to role play you and your Drake, mm-hmm. and or you and your companion? And actually, uh, DM dependent too on what they'll allow. Yes, DM dependent on what they'll allow. But speaking of DM dependent on what they'll allow, I came up with one that would be extremely fun. Instead of you having a Drake, you have a Chocobo. Final Fantasy. So you have a Chocobo Warden instead, which oddly enough fits the ability. I mean, the creature starts out without being able to fly, right? So right, you have well, your. Hold, hold on a second. A lot of this is going to be inspired from the video game Final Fantasy Tactics, if yes. any of you have ever played that game. So you start out with your basic one. So you, your basic guy doesn't need. The basic yellow might chocobo. The, might have the chocobo cure, whatever. He, he can't heal. Not important. But eventually you get where you can fly, which is the black chocobo. Gets a little, it does hit a little more, gets a little stronger. Mm-hmm. Um, and eventually you have like your red chocobo that can do the chocobo meteor out of the sky. That's your dragon's breath. Yeah, um, and then, you, you're just doing it really close. <laughs> yeah, uh, and you have, you know, as it gets larger, you just have a bigger chocobo. And now, you know, it learns how to fly, and you can ride it, mount it, and do whatever else you want. Yeah, it's got and a have beak your, attack instead of a bite attack. You have your gold chocobo at that point. Um, yeah, and it would make <clears> sense <throat> with the, the reflexive uh, resistance, because mm-hmm. chocobos are very agile. Yeah. Um, so... It would be fun, and maybe you could say, hey, instead of me learning Draconic, I learned, like, oh, uh, was it Oral? I mean, you get a language of your choice. It doesn't have to be Draconic. It's oh, Draconic. Oh, yeah, okay. Never mind. It doesn't even matter. You can just pick the one that you think a Chocobo might speak. Yeah. Instead of it being a dragon, it's a small beast. Yeah. So it's a bird, so, you know. But it can understand you, because I think that would be the important part of this, is that it, you know, the, the thing understands Draconic. Well, it should be that you and your chocobo understand. Well, yeah, whatever language you got, the with chocobo this, can speak, and your under- companion yeah. speaks. So, yeah, riding around on a chocobo I'm, seems very fun. I'm not gonna lie; that would be absolutely amazing. Like, I I want to play that now. Yeah, I want to play a chocobo warden. But uh, the way I was thinking, I would play it is, I would be a ranger who came across a dragon's horde and like I you know I, I found his tunnels and I found where it is and befriended the dragon and the dragon I, I would actually play it off an evil dragon an evil dragon that has has like kind of brainwashed me so it gave me one of its scales and I use that scale to summon the drake and I go out and I hunt for the dragon. So I go out hmm. and gather treasure hordes and bring it back to the dragon. So you're not the master. No. It's the master and you're being played the whole time. Yes. But I think it's I, like I think it's good. Like I'm like, nah man, like I've met him. Like he, he didn't try to kill me, he's everything. Like he gave me the he gave me my friend here, <sighs> and all I gotta do is go get treasure and bring it back to him. That could actually be a greater connection for the DM because maybe that black dragon is like a, a great worm, or especially an ancient worm that has ma- uh, magic. A lot of magic potential can cast spells and everything, so it's literally lending its its essence to you to do work for it. And eventually, the party will have to find out. Oh no, this the mastermind has been your you the whole time. You're the one screwing us over, and they're pointing at the Drake. <laughs> but that's why you pushed that boulder on top of me when I, when I was trying to fight the goblins. That's why you my backpack was missing that had the the one of the parts of the seven or the was the seven parts of the rod yeah. or something. Why that miss is gone? So that's an interesting that is rod of seven parts. Rod of seven parts. Yeah, that's very interesting. I like that because that's so. Literally, with the most straightforward creature, you now have one. You could have some of the most in-depth campaigns with the or well, straightforward subclass, with just because you have an extra thing in the party that normally wouldn't be there. And if anybody understands how much an extra thing in the party can mean to the party, then like one of my favorite things is there. We had a cleric in one of our gaming groups that called Opal. 
and she became the figurehead of our party and protect us because we're all too dumb and our DM was like, I'll take uh, pity on you and give you a cleric. They'll follow you around. Well, she ended up becoming the most important aspect of our whole party, which is now what this little drake can be. You can turn him into the mascot of your party. Like we are the we are the uh, dragon's fangs, and here's our dragon, or something like that, <laughs> and literally lead lead the party around and become what you're known for, um, which would be just interesting in itself. Is like now you have something that nobody else really sees. You can just role play off of, yeah, the dragon appears. Can you imagine being part bard and Drake Warden, and then you can just summon a dragon into your performances? Oh, that would be great. That would that, be that great. could act. Maybe not good, <laughs> but it could do acting. It can still do all the skills that any other person Whatever could do. Whatever you teach it to, yeah. Yeah. That, I that would be great. I want to multi-class into that, too, and have an acting Drake. So we have a, we have a troop that goes around. Acting with our with, and paint him up like a clown or something, <laughs> make him do acts. Oh, that's that's funny coming from you, Mister. I hate clowns. I don't give a crap about clowns. You're, you're thinking of the wrong person. I don't. I don't care. You about used clowns. to get freaked out about Aaron's clown statues because they're creepy clown statues. I don't care about clowns. Okay, clowns don't bother me. You can be a clown. I don't understand why you'd want to be a clown, but the clowns don't bother me. Oh, okay, <laughs> just that one looked like it wanted to murder me. That's totally different. Which is also what this Drake would probably want to do to things too, dressed up as a clown. It'd be fun mm. to describe how people, different people view their Drakes. Like, are some of them like, you know, the the cute, cuddly Drakes that are in mm -hmm. the picture here? Or are some of them like the fierce, ferocious, like, back up and get away from me type of yeah. Drake? Like, it could be, it's me and my master. You know, what, what kind of lizard does it mimic? Is it mimicking maybe more like an iguana lizard or a Komodo dragon? Or is it mimicking like a chameleon in a way? Because you could, I mean, it's a fat lizard, but you can describe however you want this to be. Which also would be funny. You can say that your Drake is just fat. Are All you, the time fat. You summon a fat Drake. And you're like, what? what? You can... Why is it always fat? It's like, well, I feed them well but all how, the time. How, how funny would it be <laughs> also if you uh, you summon like a whelpling, but the whelpling had like very tiny wings and that that's why it couldn't fly? <laughs> Wait, I just thought of something. Um, when you summon this dragon, it appears in unoccupied space of your choice within 30 feet. Does that necessarily mean it has to appear in a, on flat ground? No. So you could summon it above something, and the drake can drop. Yeah, I mean that's just like with the uh, uh, with any of the any of the summoning spells, you can summon from above and have them fall on people. So now you can have your fat drake <laughs> fall on people, especially once it gets to large size. Oh jeez! It'll instantly fall. Yeah. Well, I mean, it could just stay aloft in the air. No, have a fly speed by then. Hundred percent want it to fall. It's yeah. much funnier when your Drake appears above the barbarian and falls on the barbarian only to crush him down. And he's like, "Oh, why are you do that again?" And have him lick him, you know, like a big dog. <laughs> but then again, I mean, imagine how creepy that would be if you're playing this Drake warden and you summon the Drake behind somebody. And it's like, mm, didn't see that coming. Oh yeah, that's good for subterfuge as well. Getting in some place and and they look at you like, "Oh, you're just." just a fighter looking person you never tell them that you're a ranger or have anything like that and all of a sudden you have something to fight for you or you get captured and you put in a prison you can always summon the drake to go get the keys yep get here you go get those yeah a lot of utility comes with this like the only bad thing is this like if you're out of spell slots and you don't have the 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 free summon when you lose this drake a lot of your functionality is gone that's yeah. the worst part. That's but, the worst part. But honestly, they get there's so many resources that you have to get it back that it's 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 almost like it doesn't so, exist. Something would have to like in order to keep you from getting this back, something would would have to really really plan to mess you up in yeah. some way, like make it where you can't get a long rest, deny you all your spell slots, uh, and which is not hard. But if you're already in that position, if a DM already put you in that position, they probably already tried to kill you anyway. So it's very unlikely that that's going to happen. Yeah. So 
anyway, that's our role playing for it. Um, personally, yeah. I actually really love this subclass. From the more I read it, the more I really enjoyed it. And I started out at a, a base level like, eh, really don't care. I start. I started out liking it, but the more we read and talked about it, I like it even more now. Yeah, uh, but this one definitely will take look outside of what it shows on the paper and realize what you're getting. That's what yes. makes this great. You have action economy, even though you technically you're using bonus action to make it do things, but you have who a cares? You still have a, yeah. reactions as well. Yeah, reactions. You, you're adding more to a party that innately makes things more difficult for the DM. Right. That, but at the same time, the DM literally has something that he can always interact with the party. Yes. Always. Like somehow the Drake can always sense when something's coming that the party had absolutely failed. So you have a safety net built into the, the party. Well, see, one of the questions I'd like to have for the viewers is if you guys were <clears throat> playing this or DMing somebody that was playing this, do does the DM do the personality for the Drake, the Drake or does the player do it? Personally, I, mean, I like it when the DM does it. I actually personally I think that would be more fun is that and I think it would be more of a 75-25%. The 25 is the player gives the what they intend for the creature to act like and do. And the other 75% is is what the the Drake will actually do in given circumstances. Uh, you know, its overall personality might be laid out kind of with by the player, but yeah, that yeah, doesn't mean that because that means the Drake is always going to be that way. Yeah, because what if you're summoning the Drake to fall on people like you said earlier, yeah. and then the Drake's like, "Really, you did that again? <laughs> yeah, I man, forget you. I'm not attacking anybody. I hate you. I hate you so much. Oh, it could be like a little uh, uh, a teenage kid. Like, <laughs> stop it." I don't wanna. No, it's not happening. Or right. it could always try. To... It can speak draconic, so yeah. <laughs> it could also always just try innately try to mess with you all the time, like try to steal your your coin pouch because may it's a dragon. Maybe it's intentionally stealing from the other party members, and they don't know. And then you wake up every morning and go, "Oh, oh my, my god. god, why'd you do that again?" How <laughs> funny would it be? If, like, you had to make a contract with the Drake, and the Drake was like, all right, listen, I'll help you out, but I'm going to need a blanket of of uh, gold chain mail. That's what I sleep in. It's like, you want me to do these things for you? You want me to help you out? You know, we're, we're going adventuring. You're getting all this gold. I want a blanket of chain mail. It's yeah. just what I sleep in. That's like his little, okay, here you go, man. His little, his little blanket. Instead of sleeping on a hoard of gold, he sleeps on a little blanket of gold chains. I mean, could. <laughs> could be very interesting. Uh, I would like to see at the one point when the, dra when the Drake sees something very shiny, it goes for it. Yeah. Every time. Doesn't matter what it is. It's like, oh, shiny. <laughs> Comes back with like a giant silver candlestick. Like, uh-uh. Yeah, no, the, you're not taking this from me. The one time it went right for the mimic before the party could tell it not to. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, if you guys like what we're talking about and you want to hear more uh, or you have any other ideas, leave us a comment, like the video, subscribe definitely, and hit that bell notification at the bottom so you know when we post more videos. Yep. Until then, guys, keep having fun at your gaming table with your friends and roll them nat twos. No, don't roll nat twos. Stop that. Twos are bad. They are the worst. I hate twos. But there's two people. You got the Drake Warden and the Drake. It's two. You know how I feel about rolling twos. I'm scarred.